Good morning, my creative friends. Dr. Manette Riordan here, and this is Painting in Your PJs Live with Manette. Welcome to my studio. I am here in cold and chilly Loveland, Colorado this morning. It's about six degrees Fahrenheit, and I want to continue the journey with you that I started yesterday talking about intuitive collage. I love intuitive collage way back since my soul collage facil facilitator days about a decade ago and that process has really involved for me personally to be more about mixed media art and a little more open-ended but I still have so many nuggets of wisdom that come from the creative process of soul collage. If you're not familiar with what soul collage is, it is a powerful process created by Sina Frost. I highly encourage you to go check out soulcollage.com. And it's all about creating a deck of cards where each deck or each card in the deck represents an aspect of you. So that's in a nutshell a little bit about soul collage. It's a lot more involved than that. But I bring it up today just because it really changed the way I look at doing collage, the way I cut and work with images. And then about, oh, five or six years ago, I became a certified depth coach through the Journey Path Institute with Kat Caracello. And that, again, evolved my way of working with intuitive collage and how I work with one-on-one -on -one clients and use collage as part of a self-discovery and emotional healing process. And for some clients, it's collage, some it's painting. But for me, art as process is all about that self-discovery. And that self-discovery can be joyful, and sometimes it's about grief and sorrow. But all of it helps us get to know ourselves better, make sure we're on a path to purpose, joy, meaning, and fulfillment in our lives. I love working with people one-on-one -on -one with my Emerge method. You can find out more about that at manette.teachable.com. But today, let's dive right into some intuitive collage. I want to also show a little bit what I did yesterday. So I finished up what we started yesterday, glued all these images down, still really loving this story, covered this envelope, and now I have this nice envelope to tuck in some journal writing, or maybe if I find other little bits of collage that want to find their way onto this story, still loving the contrast of this story and this place between deep rest and really, this feels like deep play and is about shining my light in the world. And this is about being in that dreaming, restful stage of creative inquiry. So I loved the story that emerged from these two pages. So today I wanted to maybe take a little bit different direction with the collage and I'm gonna do torn paper collage. So no scissors allowed today. It's a really fun challenge. And I wanna work really quickly with this process also. And I might come back later and also add a little paint to the page. I went ahead and gessoed the page, but I pulled just a bunch of random images, some collage paper, and I want to do something that my friend Kat Caracello calls quick fire creative. And this is where we're going to give ourselves just 15 minutes to create the collage and see what can happen in that process. So I'm literally just going to start tearing paper and images and start to just put some things down. I, there's not going to be any rhyme or reason to any of this yet. So Old calendars are great fodder for collage, but I felt really drawn to this big, beautiful Gallardia here in the center of this. I love the look of a torn paper collage. And I don't have any idea where I'm going today. I noticed I woke up this morning feeling a little sleepy and tired, maybe even a little sad, and I'm not necessarily sure what that sadness is about this morning, but just kind of being present to, oh, maybe there's some emotions going on there. 
I really loved this hand with the pencil. So again, I am using torn paper collage today to tell this story, to just connect to what it is that I'm feeling, what's the story that I want to be telling. And I'm already leaning into the, to the fact that uh, I keep saying I want to be writing more, but I'm not making time for writing, so I'm sort of present to that. Um, I was drawn to these words, so they might end up on the page somewhere. Here's just some deli paper from some gel printing experience. I didn't really pay attention to colors as I was pulling images. I really, really loved this stained glass window. So again, welcome. If you're just joining me, this is Dr. Manette Riordan, and this is Painting in Your PJs live with Manette. And today we're working with intuitive collage for self-discovery and emotional healing. And I'm working only with torn paper today. And I'm just going through and tearing out some images. I'm not worrying about placement of those images yet. There's something that happens when we tear the images that really shifts our relationship with the materials, allows that um, story, it forces us to let go of any perfectionism because when we're tearing images, they cannot be perfect at all. Good morning, Judy. Good morning, Blanca. So again, I'm working in my art journal, the same journal I've been working on for the last few weeks, and I am working with torn paper collage this morning. So before I started the video, I went through my collage boxes and just pulled a few images without really any rhyme or reason. I'm going to give myself just maybe, you know, five minutes here to just kind of pull out some of these images. They may not all end up in the final piece, but I'm just sort of going around tearing them. So again, tearing images allows us to, first they create really beautiful edges on the images that, you know, you can't get those sort of torn edges when you're cutting. And also it really keeps us out of perfectionism. You heard me talk yesterday. If you watched yesterday's video on collage, I love fussy cutting. And this is kind of the opposite of that. I was really drawn to this whole image of this world map with this face, and there's some animals around it. Was also feeling called to find some animals to include in my collage today. So again, just exploring what's going on with me today, right? I don't, um, I feel a little bit off. Maybe I'm just a little bit tired. Um, need a little bit more rest. I'm really loving these fishies here in this image. Maybe it's hormones in the cycle of the moon. Who knows? Something I ate yesterday. So there's nothing really that I can name. And we all have those days when, like, it's just not quite right. Just not quite right. So again, just randomly tearing some of these images. I love maps and using maps, especially when I'm in that space of inquiry and it's such a good reminder just to stay on the path and on the journey. I love these sweet little puffins. They felt very playful to me and I found myself being drawn to sort of whimsical, playful animals. So I only got part of that puffin out of there, but that's okay. So he's probably going to get, you know, tucked in with something behind something. So I'm just going through this one pile of images quickly, <clears throat> tearing them. How's everyone else doing this morning? 
So always so appreciative of people joining me live. I also was really drawn to this sweet little donkey here and this quirky rooster. So this is uh, someone else's really gorgeous artwork. And remembering when I'm doing collage like this, I'm not as worried about copyright. I'm not, you know, creating this for to resale or public consumption. This is very personal work. And I also, I keep being drawn to this crazy page as well. And I'm almost wondering if this might even be a background image. So maybe I'm going to start with that. And I'm just going to start to play with these images in this quick fire way and see that what the story is that starts to emerge here. So nope, not liking that, wanting a little bit more color and space. And I want to just maybe be able to see these. I kind of do want maybe a background happening here. And this might end up being probably enough images for two spreads. This is definitely the, the central image of the story. Oh, that's so fun, Judy. What an amazing grandma to be doing art with your grandkids. I love it. I used to do a lot of art as a kid with my favorite aunt, who was a weaver. Also really liking, so still sitting with this theme, and I did an oracle card reading this morning with, that all three of the cards I drew were about shining your light out in the world. I'm also really drawn. So yeah, I got a lot going on here for this one singular page. And uh, so I may not be using all of these. So right now they're just kind of scattered on here. And so I'm just going to look for a minute and kind of pay attention. I kind of like this guy offering up the flowers to our figure, sort of, you know, honoring and celebrating. So hmm, as I'm leaning into this, what I'm noticing with her and the light and this gorgeous window, like it feels like there's a, a celebration here. And when I think about celebration, I often think about gratitude. And sometimes the best way to lift our spirits and to shift our thoughts is just to lean into what do I have to be grateful for, right? right? Gratitude can have a lot to do with that. So I'm very curious about this. Almost feels like this could be a flip up window here. So not sure what I want to do with this piece, but love how some of these other pieces about celebration, shining my light, but there's also these elements of silliness in here that are like the puffin feels very silly and colorful. So these animals, it's kind of like she's building community, this community of playful animals that are coming to surround her. And so I'm kind of enjoying how this is coming together. Also liking this kind of pink in the background. So again, my intention today is to work super, super fast and to not get caught up in overthinking where things need to go. I'm going to work with a just a glue stick. Love this big fat Uhu stick. Uhu is definitely uh, one of my favorite glue sticks for collage. And I'm going to get some of this gel paper. Oh, it's cool when I turned it over too. So you see different colors coming back through. So I'm just going to get some color and texture. And again, I'm using all handmade papers in the background of this intuitive collage. I love incorporating my own materials into my collage, my own photos, my own handmade collage papers. It's interesting when I, so this is the painty side, but when I turn it over, I see some of those under layers and I really like some of those colors in the under layers. So I'm just kind of moving around the page, 
quickly putting these down. Again, my intention is not to be caught up in overthinking, right? Like this, I think when I see people working with collage and they get caught up in the perfect image, and then we sometimes lose that connection to our intuition and to our spirit. So today I said in the title for this video that the, the beauty of intuitive collage is helping us to make the unconscious conscious. So when you have something going on with you that you're looking to heal, to transform, to shift or to change, we don't want to be caught up in precision. We want to just trust the flow because that's where our deepest knowing and answers come from. They don't come from thinking our way through things or being overly precise about things. They really come from just letting ourselves flow with our own creative process. All right, I'm really wanting some more of that nice neon pink on there. I'm kind of loving how that's looking. Not quite enough there. So I'm actually going to come in because I'm wanting some of that pink. And I'm going to go ahead and just add some paint as part of this process. Again, this is your process. You get to use whatever materials call and speak to you. Again, what I love about torn paper collage and just collage in general is that we're not caught up in trying to draw or make things perfect. We're simply in the energy of the selection process, and it's the selection of the images that really start to come in and tell a story. And we can't always do that with painting. So painting, intuitive painting, is often brilliant for connecting and transforming our emotions. But I also think that collage is such a powerful tool. It helps us access imagination, inner knowing. I think I'm going to pull the stem off of that. I love Gallardia. I can't wait for summer blooms here. I have a lot of Gallardia that blooms here. Um, there's one. Nope, I don't need that. So these fishies, it's probably hard to see what they are, but it seems like there's this interesting, right, tribe sort of gathering. I'm always very connected to animals and animal symbolism. And I hadn't even noticed this. So on this dragon image that I just pulled out randomly of a picture. There's even puffins on the, the rocks around this dragon. I love, love, love dragons and often am drawn to dragon symbolism. And this fun, this big puffin, he definitely wants to be on here. What if her alter ego were a puffin? I wonder what that would mean. Maybe she's connecting and growing to all the different aspects of herself. So lots of animals showing up in this one, which is interesting. And again, I'm moving very quickly through the process. Living into the questions. I love that, Marion. Good morning. Um, I could spend time every day working with intuitive collage. I love to paint. I'm also feeling very drawn today to painting big. I just finished a giant sacred circle painting, and so I'm ready to move on. I for, always forget how much I love to paint big. Okay, so this story is feeling pretty complete, and it's feeling like this is not going to be a match for this particular piece. And I'm super excited. I have the next round of color-coded emotions is coming up this weekend. We have friends coming for dinner. So again, feeling into the energy of celebration. 
And I love that Marion started with a prompt of living into the questions. Questions are our friends. And I have put in the description of this video a couple of my favorite journaling prompts inspired by the Soul Collage practice. For journaling with your collage, and I also think it can be really powerful to name your collage. So a piece like this one is, is pretty big, right? But it has um, that story to tell. So I'm feeling that already this one really is about celebration, which is interesting on the heels of yesterday's collage, which was about rest and experience. So there's a sense of continuing the theme of shining my light but there's also a sense of being in the energy of celebration here. And throughout, there seems to be the sense of play here as well. Thank you, Judy. I was really pleased with it. That was inspired by one of my son Connor's more complex sacred circle designs from our Mindful Pattern membership, and he designs them all digitally. And I saw that when I said, ooh, I want to take that one to canvas, and uh, the design didn't translate as well to painting, and so I had to really modify, which, you know, was a great experience of taking his design and really making it my own, but still feeling like it was a fun collaboration between the two of us. And... Uh, I had people ask, a couple of people on that post asked if I would consider teaching a class on how I created it. And I had that moment of just feeling, and maybe that's part of what's up this morning, is that just feeling a little bit like, I don't know how to teach that. Who am I to teach that? Uh, it's my, my personal painting process. And I'm not sure I would know how to deconstruct that, right? And so maybe there's a little sense of that... Uh, curiosity and uh, hmm how could I figure that out thank you Judy I appreciate that so that one was, is huge it's 24 by 24 so we definitely would have to work a lot smaller than that and that one took uh, forever to create as well hours and hours and hours so I'm considering it, but first I would have to really work on uh, deconstructing it. And so sometimes, you know, I don't consider myself an art teacher. I consider myself more of a coach who uses art for self-discovery. And that's the role I love to play. And sometimes, you know, it is about learning the different processes, but when I think about like my friend Andrea, who's so brilliant at teaching process and details, and I'm like, that's not quite me. And so I often get caught up in the, hmm, what do I want to teach and how do I use my time? I just love this donkey and he feels like he's just in a lot of inquiry here. He's got his head kind of tilted, asking questions. So there's a lot going on on this page. Again, this was a very intentionally what we can call quick fire creative piece where I didn't give myself a lot of time. I glued everything down. I'm sort of sitting with the where it's going. I do like this guy. Oh, that's going to cover up my donkey. The other thing I love about working with glue stick in doing this kind of quick work is that things are, are movable. And I'm wondering if maybe even he wants to be highlighted a little bit more because I do love the sense of she's celebrating herself, she's connecting to the divine, but she's also being celebrated to um, by others as well, right? So there's just this sense of celebration, things in bloom, I think part of my uh, moodiness this morning is, you know, we had another 
snowstorm come through yesterday and it's six degrees this morning and it's the end of March and I am so ready for spring. So I think maybe there's a little seasonal moodiness happening. Hi, buddy. You want to come say hi? Come on. Yeah, come on. Good morning. So Diego's here to say good morning to everyone. Awesome, Blanca. I'm so excited that you're coming this weekend. I'm anticipating it's going to be a, a small, intimate group, which is always lovely for me. All right, so that needs a little bit of work at trimming down some of those images. Haha, <laughs> I am such, actually, I'm a Texan, Mary, and even worse than that, I'm a Southern Texan, um, even though we lived in. Dallas for a long time. Okay, my fishies didn't get in there. Do I want those fishies in there? No, I think the fishies may get saved for something else. And I'm sort of looking at this one over here and thinking it's going to maybe inspire an intuitive painting piece. I'm really leaning into the gorgeous imagery there. I haven't minded the winter so much until now. I think it's just as it's getting near to the end of the season. And I'm still, so this is uh, the piece from the outside of the, the circle yesterday. And um, at the beginning of the video, I did show I glued everything down here. Really love how this page came out. And I added my envelope and covered the front of that with a beautiful piece of paper. So now I have a secret place to tuck some journaling. Yes, for the last decade of living in Santa Barbara, we were pretty darn spoiled. That is for sure. All right. So the journaling prompts that I shared. So again, I'm thinking the name of this page. I want to name this collage is celebration and um, thinking about one of the questions that I love asking is or two of the questions is what do you want me to know so that's one of the questions another one is good morning Yvonne another one of the questions is um, what do you have to give me today and so as I'm looking at this, I might come in on this other page here. And I kind of want to maybe even come in and write remember to celebrate. And this is something I find women in particular really struggle with is remembering to celebrate the big, the small, that we tend to just accomplish something and move on, especially when I was business coaching, trying to get women, women to just pause and acknowledge and celebrate. So this is the name of the piece. Remember to celebrate, right? Like when we think about all these animals, maybe that's the energy. They're just living their life, right? They're just living their life. And I'm kind of maybe wanting to... And this is what I mean by adding your own mark. Don't be afraid to go back and draw or write over the, the top of your collages. Make that puffin maybe pop out a little more. And I'm thinking that the, the gift in this piece is gratitude for the everyday. So I have feeling a lot of gratitude as I create this piece. Um, the reminder to shine my light. I'm feeling a big sense of community here, right? Community coming together. And that I'm not alone on this journey.
the journey of being an artist and a business owner often feels like a very solitary journey. And so sometimes we need to check in with our, our guides, our ancestors, our tribe, our connection. This feels very powerfully like connection to the divine, but then also connection to our earthly tribe and community, right? So finding all the different places that you are just really certain that you're not alone and unsupported. So looking at the places in your life where sometimes you might feel isolated and alone and really reaching out to say, you know, um, who's on my team is often a, qu a question I have to ask. But it feels like the, if I ask, what, what's the, what do you have to give me today? It's this idea of remembering to celebrate, connecting to my tribe, feeling deep gratitude. Celebration feels like the name of this piece. And another great question to ask is, what do you want me to know? And what I'm feeling here is to be playful, right? So there's a lot of color and image and movement here. And deep play is one of the my six pillars of a radiant life. And sometimes we had a, um, a great talk about this yesterday on, uh, I have a mastermind group with three other artists and we were talking about what happens when we get stuck and blocked creatively and we can't access our creativity. And when we're so caught up in having to always make art for others, for public consumption, for social media and marketing. And for me, it's remembering to come back to my own creating time and place for to do this deeper, more personal, intuitive work to remember the reason why I make art. And if you're on my email list, we sent out an email yesterday and it was all about all the reasons why I make art. And it was just something that came to me this weekend as we were doing our planning. And uh, sometimes I make art just for fun and to make pretty things like with my sacred circle. Sometimes I make art for just inner knowing and awareness. So this was a great one this morning for that. Uh, sometimes I make art to boost my mood or lift my spirits. So I think being present to the reasons why we make art can help us also be more committed to, to the journey, right? Um, all right, that one's feeling pretty complete. So this is an example of what I would call quick fire creative. And I also know that with each of these collages, thank you, Mary, and I appreciate that. With each of these collages, there's a piece of a story evolving. So all week this week, I'm going to continue to let this story unfold and evolve. And I'm going to stick with the intuitive collage for the rest of this week because I always learn so much about myself from the process. I was also super drawn to this piece that I painted last week. And this piece of one of Connor's sacred circles here. So, mm, so I'm feeling something very stormy happening here that feels very interesting. And I almost want to maybe even just work on this piece of paper and then I will connect it to my journal. And she showed up yesterday and I wasn't quite sure what to do with her yesterday, but she's definitely wanting to have some, to have a voice here. And I'm not sure what it is about her. So I need something. She's not quite standing out enough there, but maybe she's looking up into this maelstrom, right? Looking up into this maelstrom. So just kind of noticing the story that's unfolding. Again, just looking at the little bits of things that are lying around on my desk. I also have this hmm, stitched piece, and she looks quite marvelous on this stitched piece and really stands out there as well. So again, mixed media collage. It doesn't have to be any one thing. So 
there it is, right? Like that came together in about what, 30 seconds? And um, there's some, like she has just this beautiful look on her face. Like she looks pretty calm and happy, but she also somehow has this sense of confidence. Like I'm really appreciating the, the look on her face and um, that I'm being very drawn to. And so it feels like sometimes it can be really simple. It doesn't have to be long and involved. And I think sometimes we don't give ourselves permission to do the thing that's fast. Also really loving this pencil. So this one I think I would fussy cut and not tear. I love doing the, the torn collage. And so I don't even know, because I love the, the maelstrom of this center feels like it's a, a piece of its own. So again, just walking you through my own process. And you guys, like there's something so satisfying about filling up the, the pages of a journal um, over time. So I'm wondering, and this piece is, is quite thick, so it's going to make my, my journal pretty puffy, but that's okay with me. And I realized the other day that I need to create a uh, closure for this journal at some point. All right, so if we let this start to come together, again, creating fast sometimes has the, the most Im important stories to tell us. Sorry, when I move that, I'm getting that glare. And then what about, there's something about telling her story out into the world, sort of loving how this is coming together. Definitely want to do some clean up on this one hmm. still being drawn over here to this piece as well so maybe this piece is going to evolve a little bit it's almost like she's connecting to her own inner fire in this piece and having to write her story so this is kind of interesting having her be part of this piece And having that all come together. So definitely as I'm looking at this, it's it's um, asking for some kind of a background. So I'm going to think for a minute about what that background might look like. And I'm going to dig underneath all my stuff and find my scissors. I know I probably said it before, but getting a little tiny pair of paper cutting scissors for doing collage work makes your life so much easier when you do want some of that precision and clean edges. And I encourage people to really experiment with both the torn edges as well as the neat edges just to see what it is that you're drawn to. And the piece I tore this hand out of actually had question marks around the page. And I'm wondering if I need some question marks here. OK, so that looks better. I'm going to do the same here. This gorgeous stained glass window. I have no idea where this is from. So there's a, a woman on Amazon that sells books of collage images. They're actually designed to fit on the backgrounds of soul collage cards. And um, she often had some, some really beautiful doors and windows. So if you search for collage imagery on soul collage, there's some, some great books that are designed to be cut up. So this one feels like a sense of emerging on this page and uh, again <laughs> so well you said living into the questions and it really struck me that um, it's what I'm doing I just wasn't conscious I'm living into the questions of to, for me today of who am I 
um, or actually for me today it was how am I um, but uh, this page had these little question marks on it so I really am curious if maybe some of these little question marks want to appear on the page and for me journaling is the place where I find the answers but the collage is where I do get to create into the questions as Marion said and so just noticing and trusting your own process of starting with a prompt or a question So definitely this feels like she's emerging into the fullness of herself. And I'm not carefully cutting these out, just mostly because I kind of like the, the green and the red together. All right. So it's interesting, it started as something simple and it's really involving. I'm using a Nautilus shell and I cut open a small circle of soul collage. I love it. I'd love for you to email me some photos of what you're working on. I love seeing what other people are creating. So again, there's all this energy and swirliness and movement down here. She's writing into the center of herself. There's this curiosity, but then there's sort of emerging into this sort of full bloom of what's happening. And what I'm feeling is that I want to paint the, the background on this one, that I love the colors and the flow and the energy of this and I almost want to expand that beyond her onto the page or could it be that if I bring back this piece that that work is already done for me it's why I love creating images like this And this page is a little bigger than my journal, which is totally cool. It'll just kind of hang out the edges a little bit. This isn't the same colors necessarily, but it is the same movement of the energy. Look at that. As soon as I put that on there, right, like the openness, the expansion, everything's moving up towards the light at the top. And she is emerging into and through all of that. So again, that one, the whole thing there came together in, what, 10, 15 minutes? Yes, it could absolutely be that she's standing at a pulpit with a stained glass window behind her. And I certainly love being behind a, a, I wouldn't call it a pulpit, but being, you know, emerging, right, and being that speaker who's standing at the front of the room sharing my wisdom. It's definitely my happy place. I shared that yesterday, being on the stage. But that's true. It does look like she is standing at a pulpit with that, all that beautiful window behind her. But she's speaking to the questions, not the answers, which is really interesting totally inspired by you, Marion, and that theme of living in to the questions. All right, so I'm going to get this one glued down, and this is definitely going to be an interesting one to do some journaling with, and I'm going to want to have it sit for a while. So I have this big, chunky piece here, and I'm going to grab my stapler, which is just on my desk right here. And I'm going to use a stapler to attach this to the to the paper. So now, Marion, I'm going to be sitting with that uh, idea of me on a pulpit. An interesting thought. 
And this is a really fast way to get things down. This is going to be completely covered up. I could have taken my sewing machine and stitched it down. But fabric doesn't always glue really well unless you, like tacky glue would probably work. But sometimes we want just something quicker to get it down. So don't be afraid to bring your stapler right smack into your art journal pages and your collage. And in this case, those staples are not going to show. All right, let's get a bunch of glue on this guy. There is one in Fort Collins. Thank you, Blanca. Me too. I'm always amazed at the journey of where it takes me. Um, but yes, Marion, there is a, a big one in Fort Collins. But even last summer, they were just starting to, to meet up in, in person again. So I have not been to visit. But when I was in Santa Barbara, I was on the, on the worship committee. And so did get that opportunity to be up there in front of the stained glass windows sharing stories. And I have very fond memories of both of my kids being in the pulpit at the end of their coming of age ceremonies and their vision quests sharing and just being um, amazed by their, haha, <laughs> you're not taking attendance. You're funny. Thank you, Yvonne. I l appreciate that very much. I love sharing my wisdom. Also, it definitely is my happy place. And one of the tricks I learned from my, I almost want that offset just a little bit, from my friend Andrea, who I mentioned earlier, Andrea Chevalu from A Work of Heart Studio, who is like the queen of techniques and supplies. She actually has a, a retail store and an in-person studio as well as online programs. But when you can't get the glue stick to stick as well as you want to, if you just burnish it with your hand and get some heat in there, warm that glue stick up a little bit, it will help some of these thicker images to adhere a little bit better. So don't be afraid to get yourself into the image. Get some elbow grease in there. All right. So she may not stick up there, but that's okay. I don't really need her to stick, and she might. She's pretty thin. So I'm also noticing that maybe I'm going to come back in with a little bit more white to maybe brighten up some of these marks to continue that journey of light around the edges. I think one of my challenges with going to church throughout my life is I didn't want to give up my Sunday mornings. Like I wished it was on a a different uh, day of the week or evening. Like I used to love when we were kids, the Catholics had, you know, five o'clock Saturday evening mass because Sunday mornings are like outside time, family time, be in my studio and play time. And I get why it happens on Sundays and... Uh, yeah, consistency has never been my strong suit either. All right. So again, just living into those questions. So I want to just come in with a little more white and just move a little bit more of that energy. And I love stitching these circle, yeah, the Church of the New York Times. Yep, art parties, so fun. 
bring your friends. Creating in community is the best. My mom and stepdad read the New York Times, and I love it because they just save me the best snippets that they'll know I'll be interested in. All right, so just a little more flow and energy there. Also noticing that there's not as much of that pink around the top, and I seem to be really pulled to this neon pink today, so I'm just going to flow with that. Get my fingers in there. And I'm starting to think about, because I'm going to put this super puffy piece in there, and I added an envelope yesterday thinking about closures for this art journal. And I know my friend Ali Manning, Vintage Page Designs, has a great video on her YouTube channel about different kinds of closures. So I'm going to have to go explore. Oh, and Marion, by the way, I did look um, online, and you can still find the Horizon magazines on uh, eBay. So a bunch of people had uh, sets of them for sale. So sadly, they were not 25 cents a piece like the ones that I found, but they were definitely not super expensive either. So if you were curious, if you just um, go to eBay and search for Horizons Magazine. So there were a bunch of uh, different years and sets of those. So loving how this whole spread came together. Again, that neon pink is the piece that sort of pulls the story together. And interesting, again, I'm finding these contrasting stories, right? So I'm over here in celebration. I think over here, I'm back to deep work. So this one was maybe about experience and play, right? Gratitude, celebration. This one's about that deep reflection and sharing my truth out into the world. So just noticing how those continue to evolve. And thinking this one also uh, around this hand needs a little bit of that black outline. So we really see that hand popping out. So again, grab your gel pens, your paint markers. Don't be afraid to write right over the top of those magazines. All right, now I can see that hand. That feels a little bit better. And then I'm literally just going to glue that entire page right smack into my journal. I was watching uh, one of the Sketchbook Revival videos this morning with Tony Burt, who does amazing urban sketching things. And she was drawing these wonky little wonderful houses. And she said she prefers to work on loose pieces of paper and then tuck them into journals later to, to keep them. And so it was an interesting philosophy, philosophy. So sometimes don't feel limited by the pages of a journal. My paint is still wet up there. So now I have super happy painty. All right. And I'm going to actually, because this is, going to be flat and easier. I'm going to come in and just really use my hand to really burnish that page down so that whole page sticks over. And so now I have all these little bits and pieces starting to stick out. This one doesn't have any ribbon or hangers in it. And my nice clean cover, of course, is getting painty. Oftentimes I paint my covers at the end when I'm done 
with a journal. Okay, so these two feel complete, and I'm still kind of amazed that I got these two giant pages filled. This is quite a big journal with two completely different stories. Well, tell your little granddaughter that I say hello, and I am so glad that she's here watching along. So again, I'm going to sit with these for a while and know that the meaning is going to come even more clear after a while, but pretty happy with where they are today. So thank you, everyone, for joining me for another episode of Painting in Your PJs with Manette. Appreciate those of you joining me live as well as watching the replay. And don't forget that in the description of today's video are some great journaling prompts, three of my favorites, that you can use to work with your intuitive collage and ask some deeper questions. So celebration and then um, sitting with Marion's inquiry into speaking from the pulpit. So have a beautiful rest of your day, everyone. I will be back tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Mountain Time. Have a great rest of your day.